Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. Um, so for this one we're going to head back over to Copenhagen in Denmark and have a taste of a McKellar beer. So this one is called Crooked Moon Tattoo DIPA. Now this label only says Crooked Moon DIPA, but the reason for this is, this beer was actually brewed to, uh, to celebrate the opening of the Crooked Moon Tattoo Parlour in Helsingborg in Sweden, which is owned by two brothers, Jakob and Jonas, and there's two couple covers for this beer, there's two labels. This one is designed by Jonas, which is the quite cool sort of kaleidoscope style artwork, if I can describe it as that. And then you also have the one that was uh, designed by Jakob, which has a sort of black face and it's a lot of a more kind of darker artwork. But this one only says Crooked Moon on the label, whereas the other one says Crooked Moon Tattoo, D-I-P-A, on the label. So under uh, rate, in Rate Beer and Beer Advocate, you will find it listed as Crooked Moon Tattoo, D-I-P-A, just in case you want to go and look it up for yourself. But as is usual then with my beer reviews I'll just take you through a very brief history of McKellar because I've done quite a few of these beer reviews now and as always the brewery website is in the video description for you below along with the link to my other McKellar beer reviews I think I've done about seven or eight of them now so check those out if you are interested so anyway, as I mentioned to you, McKellar is the famous Danish gypsy brewery founded by Christian Keller and Mikkel Bjergso, although it's now run exclusively by Bjergso, who actually used to be a physics and maths teacher. And again, like Brewdog, it's very influenced by the American craft beer brewing movement. And they actually started out as a home brewing experimentation of Christian and Mikkel, and it grew from there. I mean, they used to brew in their kitchens, and they were actually part of a beer group, and they took some of their sort of clone beers, if you like, along to the beer tastings of this group, and they went down a hit. And this got the pair of them like uh, pretty much hooked on the idea of kind of craft brewing and uh, they actually don't have their own brewery as well this is the other thing that's cool about these guys is that they brew at, a, at various different breweries across the world they're known as a gypsy brewery so they use the spare capacity in different breweries they actually brew most of their beers at the De Proof Brewery in Lokrista Heifte in Belgium but they're actually known to brew in several other places as well including Norway Scotland Bel uh, other places in Belgium and also the USA as well and their home base as such is, in, is actually the McKellar Bar in Copenhagen which is actually really cool and they also have another one called McKellar and Friends with Tool as well and uh, it's actually quite cool with Tool because they are, the founders there are actually students of uh, Mikkel Bjergso so it's really cool that there's another gypsy brewery that's kind of quite well linked to it in fact but they also have another bar I believe it's in Bangkok in Thailand and I think it's also in San Francisco or San Diego over in California too so a very very cool brewery actually so definitely go and check them out if you get the chance to go to Copenhagen or you can buy a lot of these beers in the various kind of craft beer shops around the world now these days. So like I mentioned to you this guy was brewed for uh, the special opening of the Crooked Moon Tattoo Parlour in Helsingborg in Sweden it's, uh, there's two different labels for this one like I said to you too. There's this one which was designed by one of the brothers Jonas and there's the other one which was designed by Jakob the other one by Jakob is quite a bit of a darker style of artwork. This one's a kind of kaleidoscope style if you like but the other one has a sort of black face and stuff and it is actually crawled Crooked Moon Tattoo Double IPA anyway so that's a really really nice it's a really really nice bit of artwork on it this one I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little closer look at it I've got quite a bit of condensation on the bottle here so I'll just bring it up and let you have a look it's really nicely done actually it's really you, it would be a really nice tattoo that actually which is pretty damn cool actually but really really nice looking artwork on this one the kind of kaleidoscope or sort of 1970s it almost reminds me a little bit of one of the Muse album covers if you like but it looks like a really really nice beer and as always with uh, with McKellar it's a plain bottle cap on this one I'll just read out the malt base on this one for you this guy is a 9% Imperial IPA it uses Pilsner and Pale Malts and it's hopped with Amarillo, Citra, Nelson Sovine Simcoe and Sorachi Ace Hop so it's a very very hoppy beer obviously what you would expect from an Imperial IPA at 9% so let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the taste in here as you can see a really really nice smoky opening so let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste in here just shake it up in case there's any nice sediment and stuff in there it smells very very fresh on the pour actually you can see like an absolutely huge huge head on this guy Maybe shouldn't have shoot of uh, of shaken it up so early on in the the tasting, but as you can see, a really 
beautiful looking beer actually a very sort of bright orangey amber color coming out of this guy here I'll just bring it up to the camera and check that you can see this quite well as you can see there's a massive sort of three finger head on this one but it's a very if I I'll just check that you're seeing this quite well as you can see it's a very rich sort of dark orange amber color very very nice not so dark actually very bright I mean orange as in the fruit it's actually quite similar to the sort of tangerine and orangey skin color there actually and I'd say the head is slightly off-white it's a very very, as I say, a very, very attractive looking beer. It looks like a very, very Belgian beer actually, but you can see just a little bit of carbonation actually kind of going up to the top there. And it looks it looks really, really nice, obviously. So let's give this guy a whiff and see how we get on here. I'll see if I can actually pick out quite a bit of the aromas there. Just spat a little bit of the foam off, but that's okay. But yeah, very, very fresh aroma. It's very, very hoppy. A lot of kind of grapefruity aromas in there some kind of pine resin too and it's a citricky orange aroma you're getting in there too but there's a little bit I'd say it's got some sort of aromatic tint on the hops as well and it's definitely you can if you breathe it if you sort of sniff it in a little bit further you can pick up the caramel sweetness of the malt backbone as well and a kind of sort of sweet yeasty character as well there's definitely a sort of yeasty bready character, caramel backbone, but it's definitely very, very hoppy beer. Quite a complex hop aroma actually. Very grapefruity, very orangey citric, and a lot of pine resin in there. And there's a nice there's a nice little bit of floral aromatic character just complementing this. It's a really interesting smelling beer actually. Really, really nice. It smells like your sort of typical Imperial IPA, but it's a very, very nice aroma. I love the smell of these sort of Imperial IPAs. So let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on. Well, <laughs> beautiful beer. I can see why it's so highly rated on Beer Advocate and Rate Beer. Very, it's, the first taste of it is just beautiful. Yeah, the thing that's kind of sticking in my mouth is you've got a very sweet caramel backbone there, but it's got a lot of really kind of punchy fruit in it. It's very, very nice. but it's got a big bitter hoppiness to it. There's a lot of grapefruit and citric orange in there. Maybe a little bit of sort of mango and peach in there. The hop, the actual fruitiness of the flavour kind of gives way to a sort of bitter aftertaste quite quickly. The fruit flavour doesn't last all that long actually. But the, the lingering character in this is definitely the sort of bitter piney resin flavour in this. But it's got a really nice when the when the liquid's actually still on your tongue, you're getting a really nice sharp fruity flavour in this. Definitely oranges in there. The grapefruit's a little bit more subtle, but there's I would say you're getting a sort of mango and kind of peachy sweetness in there too. But the orangey citrus is definitely the most powerful one in there. The orange citrus in it is quite sharp. And if you just sit a little bit of the liquid on the front of your tongue, you'll see what I mean about the fruit character. The orange really is beautifully done in this. The orange flavours are awesome. And the other things are just a little bit more subtle behind it. There's, I think there's some peaches and some mangoes in there too. And a nice little bit of grapefruit. But the, the piney resin is very, very strong in this beer as well. It lingers all the way throughout the beer. And it comes out on the back of the tongue in the aftertaste. It's really beautifully done. but it's very fresh like I say you've got a nice sort of sweet caramel backbone in there which goes around sort of the edges towards the back of the tongue very very nice the yeasty character is there but it's quite subtle again the bready yeasty character is fairly subtle I would say and it sort of sits just at the back of the tongue as well but right in the center at the back of the tongue is where you're getting a lot of that pine uh, pine needle resin in there but it mixes very well it's a very very well balanced flavor this one actually and They've got the sharpness of the oranges and the nice caramel sweetness in there. They've got that just right. They're very prominent and I, that's what I really like with Imperial IPAs. It's, it's beautifully done. If you get the chance, definitely try this beer.
Yeah, absolutely beautiful beer. There's not much more that can be said to it. I mean, I've sat and described the flavours for you there, but really, this is an awesome Imperial IPA. It's a shame that it's only been brewed once. I mean, hopefully they'll bring it back at some point, but um, it's really, really beautiful. That's the one thing that's a shame with these sort of breweries like McKellar is that they brew so many good beers, but you will only see most of them once. They actually, I don't know if McKellar even have a core range but a lot, some of their beers do go on rotation, but a lot of them you will only see once. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, I'd say this is a pretty full-bodied one. Quite an oily sort of syrupy mouthfeel to it as well. It's got a good bit of alcohol warmth, but it's actually fairly well hidden. It's not until you actually properly swallow it that you can fully get it. The, the sort of stronger I uh, hoppy and, and uh, hoppy and pine resin sort of flavours kind of give you the hint that it is a stronger beer. They're what actually kind of gives it away as being an Imperial IPA, but it doesn't give you a little bit of that burn until it sort of gets down here. You do get just a little bit of it as you're taking it in. But it's a very, very nice beer. It's got a nice bit, of, it's got a good bit of bitter quality, particularly in the aftertaste. I don't think it's too bitter when you're sort of drinking it, but the aftertaste has a really nice lingering bitter flavour in there with the sort of pine resins and just a little hint of the grapefruit coming out a bit more in the aftertaste. It's very well done. The carbonation is quite, I would say it's quite middle ground. It's got a good, it's got, the carbonation is very well done. It has the attack when you need it to help bring out those kind of pine resin flavours and the fruits as well. It's sort of smooth, it sort of smooths out a little bit as you go towards the aftertaste. But it's a very, very fresh mouthfeel on this one. It's absolutely beautiful. That's really all I can say about this beer. If you do get the chance, you know, pick one up and give it a go. Very, very nicely done, very well balanced, and it's it's actually one of the best McKellar beers that I've tried, actually. I'm trying to think of all the different ones, but this one's, you know, one of the best Imperial IPAs that you'll probably come across. So hopefully we see a, a bit more from McKellar. As I say, they do tend to just brew their beers once, so fingers crossed this is one we see again. But um, thanks again for watching my beer reviews. As I always say, I hope you found it informative and that you've enjoyed it. If you have tried this beer, let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this one. This has been the Crooked Moon Tattoo double IPA from the McKellar Gypsy Brewery in Copenhagen in Denmark and I thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, all the usual YouTube stuff. I thank you again for your support and I will catch you soon with another beer review. Cheers.